Okay, so today's uh, session is all going to be about basically paral uh, don't, not getting paralyzed with uh, analysis uh, overwhelm. So I wanted to, that's uh, today, 16th of, um, of uh, September, and basically starting new campaigns and, and not getting overwhelmed. So this came about because uh, someone, it's, it's actually been a common question. I just hadn't, I haven't recognized the, the pattern until today where they're like, should we, you know, start with one idea or should we start with three ideas? And, and they're really, you know, questions that, that uh, can only be answered with, uh, with uh, testing and obviously your budget size and all that kind of stuff. So I thought I'd cover that in some detail today by going over uh, a spreadsheet and looking at um, sort of one aspect of this. So obviously this is not a complete uh, treatise on, um, on how to launch campaigns, uh, but I wanted to share a framework um, to make it easy to think through the issues that you are, are, are facing with. So, so the first one is, is I'm just gonna look at market awareness here. So you got you know problem problem unaware, uh, problem aware, solution aware, product aware, and then kind of like the most aware. Um, so these are like your super technical people. They'll kind of almost know more than you in most cases, or can know more than you um, in most cases. So sort of like uh, I guess running into me when it comes to prompt engineering at the moment. <laughs> Uh, all right, so sort of, and and so I wanted to give a framework of what to think about. Now, generally speaking, you want to tie your your entire campaign around an idea, right? And it's been a lot of talk about big ideas and hooks and all that kind of stuff. But how do you how do you ascertain if your idea is, is big enough, right? So that's that that's always the question. Is like again, it, it's it's good great to throw around uh, throw around. Um, the, the phrase, you know, you want to, you know, have a big idea and all that sort of stuff. Well, how do you break it down? So generally speaking, the the big idea boils down to basically three things. Now, obviously, if you ask 25 copywriters, you're going to get 25 different answers. But this one here is, uh, is, is simple enough to use right away, but gives you enough of a variety. So it's got enough in it. And the three factors are, let me increase the size here a little bit more. Uh, are essentially uh, the um, emotional appeal, intellectual curiosity, and then the opportunity uh, of the whole thing. Sort of kind of like what's in it for me. Okay, that would be the opportunity side of things. And based on your market research, you should have some idea. And that's either you want a funnel hacks, so you get competitor campaigns, or you've done some sort of uh, you know analysis to sort of what this audience looks like. And you should be able to sort of work out at at some point they're they're, they're kind of sitting in some sort of spectrum. Right? Uh, are, are you running into people who've never heard about, this is going to be about low testosterone? Because uh, the, the the guy that reached out to me, they're running a campaign on uh, low, low T. Uh, it's an info product, I think. Or maybe some kind of a gym program or consulting program or something like that. It's an info product of some sort. Um, and um, so the question is, like what what does that audience look like? Do, do people in the audience uh, that, that they want to target um, wh where are they sitting? They've never heard of this low testosterone level or they're like people who know like, you know, micrograms and milligrams and, and all that sort of stuff. So they'll be able to kind of tell you like, like nah, the, the dosage you're giving me is, is not going to work, like stuff like that, right? Or are they like, uh, what the hell testosterone and what do you mean by low testosterone? I mean, I've heard of the phrase, but I don't, I don't know anything about it. So are they, are they sitting with, here or all the way to kind of like a fully aware and uh, almost, uh, you know, have a scientific level type understanding and knowledge of that. Now, obviously, in the real world, you're going to get a spectrum, right? There's going to be a whole bunch of people that sit at, at this end of the spectrum. There's a whole bunch of people that are going to sit at this end of the spectrum and something in the middle. Now, where does a bell curve sit or where does the highest point of the curve sit is largely dictated by your research. But even despite doing all that sort of stuff, you might still come up with the conclusion like, you know, I'm not sure. I think there's sort of like... In this range, you know, maybe you'll 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 come up with sort of like, in this range, you know, maybe they're in this range, right? Uh, so, so then you, then the confusion is, or at least in the question that got asked of me was, you know, do I do this one, this one, or this one, or do I run this for one week and then I do this and do this and and those sort of 
questions. And you can tell that, like, obviously, uh, it appears that they may not have done enough research to really work out what the hell's going on here. But let's assume, for argument's sake, you've done all the research and you still can't work out which way to go with. Well, since we're in the online world, now, if you're in the offline world, then I'd say go back to the drawing board and do a little bit more research because the cost of getting things wrong in the offline world is much higher. So say, for example, if you're doing a, a product launch into retail stores or, or you're doing some something along those lines or, or you're running a, a very heavy media program, i.e. you're buying TV ads and, and the, 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 that sort of thing, well, you don't. You, it's not a $20 Facebook ad, you know? It's, 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 you're, you're spending tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars sometimes when you're doing one of these product launches. So if that's the case, then you want to go back to the drawing board and maybe do a bit more work because you kind of get one chance, basically. When, when you're in the one chance market, you have no choice but to get it right, right? Or, or, the, or, the, or the portfolio of products you're going to launch needs to have a high, high enough success rate, or at least that you want to be hitting winners, big winners every so often. Otherwise, the whole business doesn't work. Now, if you're in the online world, such as what most people are uh, you know, watching this are, uh, you know, that, that's not a, a big consideration. You know, whether you run a, a thousand dollar campaign here, 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 or a five hundred dollar campaign here, here, or here, it it really is insignificant. You know, like if someone says that three grand is a lot of money, then probably don't run anything, because you know what, you, you should maybe go do something else, because the point is that that without risking some capital, you're never going to learn. And, and, and you could, you can't be that risk averse that you that you can't afford a five hundred dollar campaign. If that's the case, then you know what, um, go find some some other market that's smaller where five hundred bucks can be split three ways, right? Unfortunately, most reasonably sized big markets that is not possible because obviously they're well priced. So it's not like Facebook's gonna. There's some magical audience out there. If you want to do life insurance, is gonna give you super cheap clicks. You know that it just doesn't happen. All right, so so I just want to be kind of pragmatic about this and not you know try and you know blow smoke, um, you know where. All right, so so let's put that to the side now. Now, how do we how do we go go about it? So there there is the, the full spectrum, but the thing to look at is is the idea that you got that you can take to market, and I've got it in the headline format here. What's the emotional appeal, the intellectual curiosity, and the opportunity, or the kind of like what's in it for me? The um, what, what what do I get out of this? All three of those should be addressed at some level inside your your ad. So let's look at the, a, a problem unaware market here, and I'm looking at the um, in this case uh, you know the current uh, mood or event. Um, you know I originally picked uh, picked something around uh, around um, um, around uh, the, the pandemic, so that's why it's at current mood. But so just ignore that because I actually changed the headline. I, I didn't think it was so relevant anymore. So feel half the man you use you used to be, right? Seven everyday uh, traps crushing your vitality or crushing your you know ego or I'm sorry crushing your 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 manliness kind of a thing, right? So that's and what am I? Uh, the emotional appeal is you know concern awareness you know could my daily habits be affecting my health more than I realize? Now the important thing to realize uh, the important thing is in the, in the problem aware phase, you really are focusing on on the symptoms or the outcome of the symptoms. But you 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 can't mention things like testosterone because that doesn't mean anything to that audience. But they may uh, they have full awareness that they're having a hard time getting out of bed, or you know they just don't have uh, you know the the high you know the the libido levels like they they used to, or perhaps uh, you know they got you know uh, you know sort of some ED issues going on. And and so those are you can refer to the symptoms of the problems which they would be aware of obviously because it's happening to them or perhaps you know uh, you know weight gain and or, or whatever the other symptoms are so you you are trying to address the market by talking about the broad symptoms in the in the unaware phase uh, of the, of the market right now similarly uh, when you go down to the aware phase you you're looking at a pain point obviously you know so 3 out of um you know uh, over 40 unwillingly suffer from low t Learn how to boost your levels by, you know, without prescriptions or this sort of stuff. Now, this uh, this is not Facebook compliant, obviously. So, it's a, the point is, it's just a headline to sort of show the differences. You, you're referring to a problem specifically here. Obviously, frustration and hope. Um, you know, symptoms are real, underlying cause, identifying the root cause of my underlying symptoms, that sort of thing. Next comes the functional benefit. Uh, these are men are reclaiming up to three hours of energy every day. You know, our 30-day protocol increases uh, vitality scores by this. I don't even know if that's real, but let's just go with it. 
and a rapid improvement in my daily function, right? So that's more of a functional benefit, uh, i.e. how am I you know, feeling about the market? Then comes the emotional one, is you're, uh, you're feeling you know, 10 years younger within six weeks, the skyrocket of confidence and, and passion or, or libido or sex drive or whatever. You can start referring to those sort of things. And that is going to be the emotional. Aspirational is, uh, this one here is, uh, you know, fathers you, uh, have more quality time discovering how optimizing your T-levels can transform into your superhero dad. You're referring to pride. And I'm, I'm not suggesting by any means that any one of these would, would apply in this market. Okay, these are just headlines that I've that I've uh, come up with just to sh show you the the how to sort of think through the, the framework, right? Not necessarily something to take to market because I don't know much about the, about the T uh, level market. And then finally, the product feature side. This is uh, sort of where you're, you know, I guess any comp play would, would, would come into place here where, you know, you're referring to the efficacy of the product itself uh, or, or some mechanism by which you can really boost this thing home. And you're referring to, uh, referring to people with, uh, uh, that know the technical side of things. For example, how many micrograms in the product and 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 that sort of stuff. And so you can so you're trying to com you're trying to compete against competitor brands or competitor products by showing that your product has more efficacy. Now there could be an ingredient that no one's heard of, or higher levels of ingredient um, and those sort of, that sort of thing, right? And that would be kind of like the most uh, aware aware market uh, because they they're not likely to be convinced by. You know, talking about you know, you know, uh, you know, reclaim three hours and all that sort of stuff. They'll be like, nah, listen, what? Let's let's let's. They're the kind of guy or girl or whatever it is. They pick the they pick the the product and they turn it over and they're looking at the fine print with the ingredient levels, right? And so, so the the reason for presenting this is that the main part of this is 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 not so much uh, is this three three bits here, um, which is consider the emotional appeal of what you're coming up with the intellectual curiosity uh, that is contained within the concept we've come up with, which is actualized with the headline, and then sort of, you know, what's what's in it for me, right? What would I get out of this? And 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 just by focusing on these three things, it'll it'll improve the quality of the concept and the idea and the headline that you put into the market. Right. So once again, it's a very quick and dirty way to sort of work out is this the right way of uh, or, or or is my idea punchy enough uh, to to take into the market? Um, and if you are saying like, hey, listen, I want to run all five, then by all means, run all five. You know, I mean, Facebook ads, while you know getting expensive, it, it sure as hell beats uh, <coughs> doing an offline launch where you could be down you know tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars before you learn if your idea was dumb or not. Right. So it gives you a lot more opportunities to to test. Now you're also going to see whenever you run ads, especially going for broad markets, that that each one of these ha will have an appeal. So you may find audiences across all all five or six of these. If that's the case, then you're going to go out there and build a funnel in all all of them. So the the point here is that that not necessarily all of these will end up on the same landing page. Uh, they may end up on the same landing page when you're starting out, but then sooner or later, if you find traction, then you want to break those groups out and drive them down their own funnel. Obviously, someone who is extremely unaware is not likely to go from unaware to 100% aware within one interaction. They may need a few more touch points to get there, right? So that's just looking at the, the, the pragmatic nature of this. A good example comes into mind. There was um, uh, you know, a Leadsuk user or former Leadsuk user. He sold the business. Uh, he ran a, a funnel in, um, you know, I think it was gastric band surgeries or something. And, uh, and they were writing Facebook ads to try and book uh, patients into a doctor's surgery and he was telling me that you know it wasn't working so I said well hang on a second how many people do you know that uh, that we look at a Facebook ad and want to get operated on so you know lengthened the funnel out and they added in more steps and that actually started working right so just a, uh, a good practical example where you need to also consider what is the nature of your product what is the the nature of the problem you're trying to solve and what is the nature of the prospect? Obviously, like I said, when we started the call, this is a quick and easy way to think about this thing. It is not does not include other factors like you know how competitive the market space is. You know, obviously, that's going to have an impact on how you how you approach your uh, your your campaign. Um, also, do you do you have product differentiation? So, how different is your product? That's going to have an impact as well, um, and other factors like that. Right? Would would also dictate how you run your funnel. 
right. So that kind of concludes the sort of the idea part of the of the whole thing. Uh, once again, just wanted to share with you that the most important part is uh, whenever you're coming up with your your headline ideas or concepts around which you want to build your headlines, is that you do cover the three things, which is the emotional appeal of it, any intellectual curiosity that's coming out of this. Like this looks interesting, uh, and kind of like obviously what's in it for me has to has to be there, right? So if you can cover all three, that's great. Um, and if you can't, then uh, then obviously go go back to the drawing board and think a bit more. The reason for sharing the example is because you can see that across uh, all levels of product awareness, you you can kind of demonstrate you know things in all all three. Um, and uh, that's it. I think that concludes kind of like today's uh, you know talk. And hopefully, uh, and I'll pass it to the, uh, to the to the person who wants to run this campaign to give them some extra foresight as to what to do. There's a technical side of this is how, how long to test for all that sort of stuff. So obviously I think we covered this in the both in the past. I'll just give it a quick summary of it. You wanna run your campaigns anywhere from about 10 to 14 days. And you wanna divide your budget in such a way that, that you get some outcome and result in about 10 to 14 days. Plenty of uh, tools online that allow you to calculate sample sizes that you should use. And that should tell you how many impressions you wanna get on your ads. And uh, that would be the first uh, way to sort of start saying, listen, I need to get at least 50,000 impressions on all three campaigns. So you're looking at 150,000 impressions yeah, and you work back to the CPMs that you're gonna be paying and that should tell you how much your budget should be. And then you can see whether that's affordable or, or not. All right, anyway, I'll cover yeah. that in another call in detail. All right, question. Nick, um, obviously this is very subjective, but you personally, if, it, if you were on a budget, would you obviously, you'd want to cover all five um, or six, is there? Yeah, the six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, you no, just, no sorry, no, there's, there's, these two are, are duplicate, so. Oh, okay, sorry. Or all five, would you just do one, uh, would one ad be sufficient for each of the market awareness or would you suggest yeah, a couple yes, more creatives? Yeah, or... yeah. yeah, the reason why, why, uh, why like, Obviously, more the better, but the point is you'd yeah. rather go more across rather than pick. Okay, so there's two ways of looking at this. You can go, I'm going to go across all five and one, one in each, or I'm going to yeah. pick one that my research tells me is the is the one that I should go for and run five in, in that. But personally, I'd rather go wide first before I go deep because going deep presupposes that you've actually worked out where the market is. Unfortunately, I don't know too many people who are that confident. Um, and 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 I've 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 never found my confidence to be that reliable. So I'd rather yeah. test that assumption. Yeah. Now, of course, they, you know, you're gonna run into a lot of gurus out there who'll tell you, you know, there's only one way of doing these things. Uh, you know what? That's maybe maybe that really works for them. Uh, I just found there's a it, it, you gotta take the the bullshit uh, a, a grain of salt with a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I've I've worked on many 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 campaigns. Uh, guys doing millions, you know, up to a million dollars spend a day sometimes, and even they're not hundred percent sure when they start what's gonna work. So so. Yeah, I'd rather go uh, across uh, than to than to have my heart set on one and then uh, you know blow my budget there. Because the, here's the thing: if you even if you partially get if you partially get the 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 message right, you're gonna get traction of some sort. That's that's the okay. point. Like like yeah, uh, you you might realize you know I'm only gonna run one ad. Yeah, but if the if if the conversation you're starting with the market is is hitting the market in some way, then you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get the, correct ex exactly yeah and, and yeah. may not it's obviously not polished but when you when you're in the vicinity of where the market is even if it's badly worded you, you still end up getting some traction and so yeah. the, that's that's the best yeah so i found uh, that over time like or, or, you know obviously if you've got some superior knowledge like maybe you worked in a, in a campaign before or you're working with someone who's got lots of experience in the, in the in this market or that sort of stuff and they won't tell you hey listen you know what we've done millions of tests and just do this great you know what that's that's obviously far superior uh you know knowledge that someone has but that's due to the price they've already paid so they've already done your testing for you and they're telling yeah. you just go do this and 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 that's fine that that's a that's a reasonable outcome but in light of the, in the absence of that, i.e., you don't have a, access to that expert who is currently running campaigns in this in this market, then the the pragmatic approach is to do this. Plus, this is really really scalable because you can do this in any market in every market, even if you have don't if you don't have access to an expert, and and it doesn't cost any more uh, because you are bound to because 
because it's a fractal, right? And, and, and so when you when you got no awareness, when you got no idea about the market, you'll run ads across all three. Then you realize, oh, hang on a second, I, I oops. Then you realize that, oh, you know what? I've actually got traction in these three. Well, guess what? Now you're gonna run, you know, three in each, and then you might realize, uh, and and you know, and then you might keep scaling just these three, mm -hmm. uh, and and so so it's it's yeah wide, and then you find your two or three that are working, and then you go deep into those you, you you get those profitable first uh or whatever your metric is for, for for profitability and performance and then you go back and you deal with the ones that didn't quite work because because maybe this here is where bulk of the market is because in in any in any market less than five percent of people are in market 95 percent of people are not in market that's just the the reality of of all marketing so how do i capture the 95 so the 95 usually is sitting in this range here and so, so they obviously would need a slightly different type of funnel. They may need a longer funnel, or perhaps the NOA market, you might you might find them in a native ad network where obviously your ads are much smaller and you're getting an advertorial to do most of the work, but they're not they're not near conversion yet. So the goal here would be, you know what, you know, uh, take our quick test that reveals whether whether you can reverse, you know, and become the demand that your dad was or something. Um or, or or become you know an alpha male like like in the old days or, or whatever the the hook and appeal is. So here you would you would try and get that person to go. You know what? I resonate with the fact that I am getting out. I'm getting up. You know, lethargic every morning. You know, I'm, I'm you know I'm you know you know I'm no longer that you know virile and vital and and don't have the vitality and all that sort of stuff. And and they and they can resonate with the symptoms of it. Well, let's let's grab them from the market and put them into our funnel. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to put a product in front of them. It just means that I'm going to put some other, uh, some other, uh, uh, you know, messaging in front of them to drive them to the product. Now, sometimes it, it is one step, and if that's if that's uh, if in your case, if you have a big VSL and that can all do all that work for you, great. But it may not be that that's the optimal solution, and you might be like, you know what, I'm going to get them off the market, and I'm going to lead them with uh, you know a series of two or three videos, uh, and so on and so forth, till they get to conversion or a combination thereof. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I think, yeah. the, with the generations as well, and I don't want to offend anyone here, but yeah. like I've, I've obviously baby boomers and baby boomers and a bit below, uh, quite knowledgeable, general knowledge, et cetera, where you've got the younger generation who are very knowledgeable about specific things, but general knowledge and changing it. We're, like I don't want to offend yeah. them, but they haven't got a clue, the ones I've dealt with. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like they they'd be more problem aware with certain products and not correct. other problems. They'd be hyper aware. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. So so once again, what this is not referring to is a market segment. Because this yeah. this what I've got here, this is this you could say is is kind of like more your you know 40 to 60 or maybe yeah. even a, like a 50 to 60 kind of range. Oh, sorry, 50 to 60 kind of range. But if I was doing a campaign for 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 less than 40s. Uh, then, then it, it, the the messaging would be totally different, right? And so, mm -hmm. so yeah. So sorry, I, I should have probably presupposed that. That I'm I'm kind of considering a, a largely uh, o, uh, older demographic, not yeah. necessarily someone in their 40s who's looking for testosterone optimization, not necessarily to kind of get out of bed, but sort of uh, I don't know, maybe you know, I don't know, get a six pack or something or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever yeah. people are using testosterone for at the at the younger age age group. And so, so yeah, you're absolutely right, and and that's why in in personal Just OS we did all that segmentation work because that's what you'd, mm -hmm. you you you'd 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 bring this in after the segmentation was done, because yeah. because because you've got a very tight group of people to go after, and then now you're going to ideate all of this around that group. So yes, sorry, I, I should have uh, pre prefaced that uh, before going no, into all, into this. All good, yeah, all good. All right, cheers, Nick. Yeah, no, no worries. Good question. Anybody else? When you're doing campaign and you've the front end's working, so you're getting leads and everything, and they're going through the sales teams. Yep. But they're struggling to convert. How do you then go back and re ideate and figure out where the uh, okay so is? okay yeah so I guess the question is uh, I'm assuming the sales team would know what objections they're presenting or whatever the issues they're presenting as to why they're not converting on the call. And that would be obviously your first point of call. So hopefully all the calls are recorded, which means you can capture that. The, here you, you'd nudge your sales team or the sales manager and say, hey, listen, you know, those who don't convert, 
let's let's uh, let's try and dig a bit more before letting them get off the call. So it's almost like, okay, you know, you know, I respect the decision that you've chosen not to, you know, buy my product. Let's talk a bit about, you know, like what were you thinking of before you came on the call? Is there something, you know, we didn't answer for you? Like kind of, you know, dig, uh, dig a little bit more to understand what is the objection that resulted uh, in that. And it could be that you've targeted the wrong person, right? We, we, we have to, we have to address that. So for example, I run an ad and I get a whole bunch of people on, on, on welfare payments or whatever, but they're, you know, being sold to a Ferrari dealership, right? Like there's, there's, there's no amount of objection handling is going to get you a sale there, right? Obviously I'm picking a really wild example to illustrate the point here, but the point is that sometimes those nuances get missed uh, unless there's awareness there. And that would be sort of what is stopping you. And, and, and if you are discovering that the, uh, they just don't have the ability to afford this this solution. Uh, then, then what that means is that you, you got to go change your targeting and all that sort of stuff so you can bring back the right person. So, no, if, if that's the case, then you would go and change the ad copy to eliminate them at the ad stage so they never enter the funnel to start with. Would be the, the way the, to. Yeah. That's, that's, the big yeah. thing would be pushing back on the sales team to give you data on like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> why they why they're not converting? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and and the goal here is it wouldn't be, I, I don't think I'd accuse the sales team, like, listen, hey, how come you can't, you can't get them over the line? But more like, hey, look, guys, can we get some help? Inquiring, yeah, inquiring to why. Understand, understand, yeah, understand. Is this is this because we got the wrong person on the call uh, who should not have never jumped on the call? If that's the case, then we got to go fix our targeting. In fact, that's what happened to, uh, to you know, um, to someone, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago in yeah. the life insurance space. Yeah, they... Uh, they they read some comments in some Facebook group about how to optimize your ads. They optimized the ads and and the CPAs dropped, uh, but it started getting uh, you know a clientele that can't afford the product or or they or they can't afford the, the 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 higher value version of the product. And all of a sudden the client's like, listen, your your leads are crap, and he's like, I'm making more margin, and he kind of jumped on a call with me in a panic. He said, like, you know, what do I do? And I said, yeah, listen, I've told you time and time again, uh, you know, sales conversion is not leads conversion. And just because you're getting one doesn't mean you're going to get the other. So you really want to make sure that that if when you are getting your leads conversion, that you are still getting the right type of lead that your client is looking for. And so so I told him, I said, I said, the goal here is not to necessarily stop the campaign, but it's to realize that that the that the type of person your client or the type of products that your client is selling. So so think of it this way: that the, you've got a Ferrari dealership and and you've got a kind of like a Hyundai dealership uh, or Hyundai, depending on where you are in the world. Um, you well, if if well, if, if you're running a campaign that's getting a lot a lot of you know a lot of sub fifty uh, k car people and you and you're redirecting them to the Ferrari dealership, obviously they're going to tell you the leads are crap. So so you want to make sure that that the alignment is there. Now, if, if, if you're running a campaign that's, a lot, that's getting you a lot of the lower value type, uh, but that's a volume play, well, there's, there's, there's some other business in, in, the, in the market that is optimized for that audience. They, they, they've got automated systems or, or however, and so they, they're the type of people that they're looking for. Uh, and, and I've seen that time and time again. In fact, there's a really uh, big uh, personal injury guy inside Lead Took, and he's got this, this, this four-tier system. So when he gets the leads... Uh, he sees whether they would match his prime customer base. These are the, the A-grade law firms that are willing to pay top dollar. He sends those people there. The ones that get rejected um, or the ones that don't qualify, he sends them to, uh, I believe he sends them to a, an aggregator uh, because they, they pay the second best. And then if they don't even qualify for the aggregator, he then sells them to a call center and that's on a per sale basis. He's like, listen, I can't do anything with these leads anyway. I'm going to send them to a call center. And the call center is like, listen, if we convert them, we'll give you whatever, 20%, 50%, or whatever the payday is. But, but it's based on success. And so, so the call center is getting free leads to convert with. Uh, the, uh, the lead generator can't do much with them anyway. And so he's just sending them there. And he's like, listen, if I get a buck out of this, that's a buck that I, that I wasn't going to get anyway. So that is a really, really smart way or a very a much more optimal way of doing that. We've got someone else who's actually doing where they've got a, a ping tree or, they, or they're doing, a, um, uh, I think they're using Leadspeedia or something where you can actually set the minimum price you want to sell at. So he's kind of like, he sends them at like, you know, 150. Doesn't liquidate, okay, okay, 120. And then, you know, 100 and then 90 and then 80. He's, he's sending it at every, at, at, you know, almost like 30 bucks, you know, you know, reduces the price by 30 bucks on every API call to see if there's somebody 
uh, in in his in his uh, in his pink tree who's gonna who's gonna hit uh, he hit the price. So what because what he's doing effectively is saying, can I can I get maximum price for my leads by 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 doing that? And so anyone who's not obviously not willing to pay that high price, that they they, they 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 are not in the auction. And then he sends the second time around, and all of a sudden it brings a few more people into the auction, and so on and so forth. Until I think the last one is like, you know, I'll, I'll take a dollar, man. <laughs> Just and so 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 he's he's able to liquidate. Uh, you know, most of his leads, if not all of his leads, uh, at a at a distribution of price points, and then he's essentially looking to see, make sure that his average uh, across the board is higher than obviously his CPA. Does that answer the question? Joss? Yes, it does. Nick, sorry, because I'm mute. Yeah, no, sorry. Thanks so much. Yeah, no, cool. Right. Anybody else? Good question, actually. Yeah. So this is a client telling you the leads aren't selling, aren't converting. Uh, yeah, a new a new campaign. They told us it wasn't converting yet. Um, okay. So we're just gonna go and check. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. so whenever it's a new campaign, you you always want to question not the fact that these leads. You just want to make sure that they're the right type of people that are coming through. Because obviously, when you're starting out, your your knowledge and awareness is not quite there. Your pixel is still, you know, hasn't been fully seasoned yet, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So, so obviously, you know, uh, you know, whatever ad platform you're using also does not have the, the any data around what the hell you who the hell you're looking for. So it can kind of go a little bit all over the place. But so, so the point there is is to is to just make sure uh, that now, if that's the case, then one of the things you could do is is to give um, more profiling questions to your to your call center or the or the client side so they can give you a bit more a few more data points around who's coming through uh, so things like um, I don't know what the product is but but mechanisms around around or questions around, around the product could be income levels you know could be family size could be you know like any 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 defining factor that matters for that particular product type then that could give you an indication saying, ah, right, cool. We didn't realize that people who don't qualify for your stuff have these characteristics and people who qualify for your stuff have these characteristics. Now that allows you then to take those things and put them in the ad or targeting or mm. whatever. And, and that way you, you, you can kick those people out uh, along the way. And of course, you know, you can obviously take those e emails and, and, and do negative audiences and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but more importantly to also because if you're doing broad campaigns, then you may not have the opportunity to do too many negative audiences. If that's the case, then you need to change the ad itself. Yeah. So I think so far it's all qualified based on what they've told us. Yep. But I think we have to go get ourselves got to go. Yeah. 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 And, Listen. You know what? Uh, uh, yeah. I've 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 often seen clients' understanding of their own own customers is actually quite uh, uh, much to be desired most times. Uh, not not every time, but but most times. Yeah. Like oftentimes people's definition of the client is quite um is is not detailed enough they'll be like yeah they're in their 50s and they you know have this income level and then but when you when you say okay fine let's pull all the sales data out you've got over the last 12 months okay now let's go survey those people you'll realize they're kind of liberal all over the place so that's actually wasn't true while it it may it's plausible that they they that's where the market is but when you actually look at the existing customer base you might realize hang on a second there's a bit more there than that, that we missed so that could be one way to address that would be to ask your your client to anonymize the data, i.e. remove name, email, phone number, uh, and just give you the rest of the data. So which is, i.e., you know, age, uh, you know, gender, you know, the, the type of product they bought, uh, you know, the, the dollar value of the product they bought and all those sort of things. So that way you, you're not getting anything that's going to be a data breach from their perspective, but that spreadsheet or whatever they give you can really allow you to sort of understand, ah, oh, right, we don't realize, uh, like you can see some patterns in there uh, and that might change how you're targeting and or doing your ads. In, in, in fact, I, I'm, I'm starting to think that if you're a lead gen, you should almost have that as part of the contract. <laughs> uh, like like we, we demand you give us that information. I mean, as long as you can, hopefully you can get away with it, but that's that I I would I would request that because it just makes your life easy because you can exactly see what's actually who's buying right 
Um, and, and that's a that's often a, a faster way to optimization. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Ting. Good one. No, no worries. Any other questions? Jonathan, Eric. I like what's going on the call. Um, just that stuff we were talking about with tracking. Do, is there anything else you need to be doing for that? Yeah, no, I, I'm going to get back to you on that because, uh, you know, you, by, by the time you replied, I was already working on this. So once I get off the call, I'll, I'll <laughs> have a look at that. Yeah, no, yes. I don't think it should be an issue. Yeah, I, I had a quick look, but I could see two, two GTM no. containers. And that's why I wanted to confirm, like, hope I'm not solving the wrong problem. So thanks for yeah. letting me know which, right. which container to look at. Yeah, so I'll, yep. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that after the call. Um, I saw Anthony message you about... Sorry? I saw Anthony message you about doing some stuff to make it easier with lead silk and lead uh, lead bud. Yes, he or... sent me an email. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't replied to him yet. Um, so uh, I think he they want to add a a node inside lead silk. So he just was giving me the uh, the tech specs for that. I did ask for it some weeks ago just to make it easier hmm. for people to do that. Yeah, so so I'll, I'm gonna you know yeah I'll probably try and get that added in by the end of the month. Sweet, that'd be good. Is yeah, 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 what yeah, the support team easier, said. easier for both sides, right? Easier for yeah. easier for their clients who are using lead so and, and vice versa. People who are looking for a a solution that conforms to one to one consent can just you know drag and drop a node and it's done. All right. Anybody else? Sorry, Jonathan, I saw you unmute. No, I was saying Oh, awesome. All good. All right. Well, if there's no more questions, we'll call it uh, a day. And I look forward to seeing you same time, same place. Uh, now, also, by the way, if, if there's something you want me to kind of work through or whatever, I don't know, just post it in the, or just message me saying, can you cover this? But next thing what I'll do is I'll, I'll cover the problem that I'm, that I'm trying to solve for, for Joss, which is uh, a cross-domain GTM setup. It's a little bit more complex than than a plain vanilla one, and I'll go through if there's any 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 intricacies or nuances to to pick up because I think that could apply to to you guys, um, Jonathan and Eric, uh, because you got domain A that's running ads, i.e. the affiliate, and then you got domain B where the where the uh, where the conversion takes place, and the two separate domains. How do you how do you manage to send the data across from one to the other? Um, so in light of the fact that third-party cookies are basically no longer functional, which previously was a nice way to do cookie syncing, which is kind of no longer available. So how would you go about doing it? So anyway, once I've, uh, so just once I solve your problem, uh, I won't show your funnel, obviously, but I'll share the concepts around oh, how to deal with uh, domain A to domain B. Cool. All right, guys. We'll chat uh, same time, same place next week.